We often think of cybersecurity as being related to CRMs, ERPs, and online team chat rooms. But how do industries like manufacturing that rely on hardware keep their systems operational? Hi, I'm Rebecca from Cargus, and today on Tech Innovators, we're talking to Frank Aponte, the Smart Manufacturing Business Development Lead at Shadler Yesco Distribution, an independent electrical distributor in Pennsylvania. Before we chat with Frank, we would be so happy if you considered subscribing to our channel, leaving a comment with your thoughts on cybersecurity and manufacturing, or just offering a thumbs up at any point during the video. That said, let's chat with Frank. So Frank, when it comes to both manufacturing and non-manufacturing companies, what are the common reasons that companies are experiencing security breaches and, and running into cyber threats? Uh, historically, if you look at a lot of the security and vulnerability reports that um, the, you know, the big thinkers put out every year, year after year, it's people. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, whether it's a phishing campaign or USB drives with malware scattered in a parking lot, uh, it takes very little effort anymore to, to, for an APT to exact influence on the user and pressure just about anyone into a mistake. Uh, the use of urgency and calls to action in phishing emails is a very, very strong tool mm -hmm. in a social engineer's uh, toolbox. In your opinion, what are the three top risks posed by cyber threats? I realize this could kind of be a different answer yesterday versus today versus tomorrow. But as of right now, today, what would be the top three greatest risks? Uh, in general terms, uh, loss of intellectual property or trade secrets, loss of personal identifiable information or PII, and loss of profitability, whether that comes from not being able to use your, your software networking resources because of a, um, some sort of cyber attack, like a ransomware attack, specifically in the manufacturing, um, you can lose your assets on the plant floor. So you've lost your capability to produce, your productivity goes down. There can be loss of confidence in the accuracy of the information you've collected. So maybe the attacker didn't take down a production line, but they messed with the data that was some regulated industries. You have to show that you maintain a certain temperature in a batch for a certain amount of time. If you've lost the uh, the accuracy or the confidence even in that accuracy, that may be a lot of product that gets uh, you know, disposed of. And most importantly, and we're finding this to be a growing threat, is the reliability uh, or viability of machine safety systems. Mm -hmm. So they can attack a, a safety system which would keep the machine from running if somebody entered a part of the equipment. And uh, by taking that down, you won't get the, the machine back up and running until that's resolved. It seems to me like the manufacturing industry is, it's a pretty unique one since there are business processes and functions like you just mentioned that are just so different from what you'd see in something like tech or hospitality. What do you think the manufacturing industry can be doing like right now um, to improve their system securities? Um, a, a lot of it has to do with education. Um, there's a, a lot of the threat vectors or attack vectors that come about in the regular IT space still hold true um, within the uh, OT uh, or operational technology mm -hmm. systems. As an example, if you send a document to the printer and it takes 30 seconds to print or five minutes to print, aside from one of those outcomes being less convenient, you still got your print out, no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. Uh, in an industrial environment, if you open a sample valve to collect a sample of product uh, for, say, two seconds to fill a small sample container, and then you go to close it, and while most of the time, nine out of ten times, it takes half a second for that valve to close, but in that one instance, it takes five minutes to close, uh, at best, you've made a mess or wasted product. At worst, you've created an environmental incident. You know, it, everything needs to happen in near real time. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that you bring that up because even reading about cybersecurity and risk assessments and other preventative measures, it sounds like some companies just aren't running these tests, even on any sort of annual basis. 
So how are these preventative cybersecurity measures slipping through the cracks, even in this digital age where we are working remotely or bringing our own devices? I, I think the digital age has brought about a culture of, we promised that this could do more with less, so go forth and do more with less. Uh, currently, we, we're seeing a lot of skills and knowledge gap challenges from the factory floor the whole way up the corporation. And that means there's a lot to learn and know and be experienced with. Uh, it's driven us away from specialization and more towards generalization for our in-house resources. Mm -hmm. You know, leadership at all levels should be empowered to look outside uh, their in-house experts and look to outside experts and specialists for help in things like determining what the best tests are for that particular customer setting policy, whether it be computer use policy or how a company gets its users to refresh your password every 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Also, I think a lot of companies tend to look at cybersecurity as a giant expense bucket with no mm -hmm. value aside from being some sort of misguided assurance or whoopee blanket that they're doing something. So if I'm doing something, that must be the best I can do. And we need to realize uh, maybe taking that from just something we feel good about to being proactive. And you know, mm -hmm. if you have certain security or you know best security, cybersecurity practices, certifications, you know that sets you apart from your uh, industry peers and competitors. Um, you know, companies tend to find budgetary funds for physical security because it's obvious and visible. Mm -hmm. uh, th and there are companies that make a concerted effort with cybersecurity, but for many companies, cybersecurity risk assessments uh, don't even register as highly as an afterthought, uh, either from a lack of awareness or thinking that maybe they already have everything covered. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think we need to normalize the messaging that it's okay to bring in outside experts. Uh, even if you have things covered to the best of your knowledge and abilities, getting input from another group with different experiences and different perspectives uh, can help either confirm the things you're doing right or drive you to make critical improvements that you may never even have thought of. I had a chance to hear you speak recently, and there was one specific illustration that really stuck with me. And it was along the lines of, you don't need to be hack proof, you just need to shrink your target profile. Uh, so what are the top three things that companies manufacturing or otherwise can do right now to shrink their target profiles? And then what can they be doing regularly or what should they be doing regularly? That's good. Um, probably at the top of the list, uh, as, as we've discussed, people can be one of the biggest threats, uh, especially on you know, the fact that it's non-malicious intent. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they need to be educated, they need to be trained, and they need to be routinely tested. So you can teach them what phishing emails look like. Uh, you can kind of give them some, some test emails to determine whether or not it's uh, you know, a phish email. Uh, and then send out periodic test emails where they have to uh, follow the company policy and mark it as phish. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as routine things, uh, another thing would be to perform routine pen tests and, and make improvements based on feedback from those. Pen test is shorthand for penetration test. And typically there's, there's three prongs to it. Stereotypically, most people think of just the cyber part of the threat, mm -hmm. which would be somebody trying to get into your internal uh, IT network to look for uh, HR information, accounting information, uh, drawings of the new widget you're going to release next year, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other part of it, as I said, is physical testing. Can somebody who doesn't have access to the plant get into the plant? Are there sensitive areas that only trained and authorized people like electrical rooms and things like that? If somebody got lost that they could uh, stop power, you know, flowing to a certain part of the plant, but they could get injured themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, another part of that is all of the uh, social engineering. You know, do, do you pick up a, a thumb drive that you find in the parking lot? Uh, it could have just a regular virus on it. Uh, there are actual small microcomputers that will fit the size of a thumb drive mm -hmm. and will execute code as soon as you plug it in and power it up. Um, yeah, so there's, <laughs> there's all kinds Pretty of scary. devices. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and just especially with the social engineering and having those policies in place, training your employees on what those policies are and what the expectations are is super important. I mean, the mm-hmm. easiest way for people to never meet an expectation is to not know what they are. So if you message that and you say, look, if you find a USB drive, give it to your manager. Managers are supposed to pass it up the ladder to IT or you take it to IT or you know, however your policy is written, depending on the size of the company and how formal or, or informal those things are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once it's been passed off to IT, is there you know a trouble ticket system where they could enter, hey, so-and-so dropped off this thumb drive they found in the parking lot. You know, they, they can, if they have the people to do it internally, they can inspect it. If not, they send it out to a security team that can see what's on it and advise them on what to do. Or, you know, it, it's it's a lot of communication, just like anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, normalizing those behaviors are, are really, you know, good things for that. Uh, and the last thing I would say would be to work towards a converged ITOT environment. Uh, in theory, it should enable all of the company's stockholders to bring their experience and knowledge uh, to bear on cybersecurity across the entire enterprise and, mm-hmm. and work together. Everybody's an expert on what they know and sharing your perspectives as a plant engineer in manufacturing on the OT side, sharing that with the people on the IT side and what they bring to the table uh, is, is pretty much about the best way you can make sure that everybody gets um, – their needs met and also the that the enterprise gets its needs met and mm-hmm. being secure or as secure as possible. I mean, there's there's no such thing as hack proof, but it doesn't mean that you should give up and not at least try and do your best with that. Right. How should companies be defining cybersecurity or risk policies, uh, including in that who should play a role in that process and how often should that be something that's reviewed if risk assessments at a bare minimum are on an annual basis. What is the sort of rule for policies? The trick is to have your policies written as specifically as it takes to make them useful, Mm -hmm. but not so specific to make them onerous. Um, And even though, as as we've talked, you know, a lot of the details of how those accesses happen uh, change week to week, you know, year to year, uh, even day to day at times. you know, the, the, still the general outlines of, you know, you can do this on a company computer. You cannot do this on a company <laughs> computer. Uh, those things don't tend to change much over time. Uh, it may be some new technology or, or, or an app mm-hmm. uh, that, that comes along that, you know, people want to use. And it, all those things have to be vetted out. Frank, thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise in the field of cybersecurity, particularly that intersection with manufacturing. Uh, And do you have any parting thoughts, parting wisdom for our viewers? Um, Probably the biggest thing is just stay educated. Uh, Mm -hmm. Try and learn something new about it as often as you can. Um, That's how we grow. We learn new stuff. Exactly. Thank you so much, Frank. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. What is your company doing to stay secure? What does cybersecurity look like in your industry? We'd love to hear from you, so feel free to share your story in the comments section. Tech Innovators is produced by Cargus, a Pennsylvania-based software company offering solutions from Microsoft, Sage, and Salesforce, as well as custom-developed software. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out the links in the description. Until next time, this has been Rebecca with Cargus Tech Innovators. Thanks for watching.